जननी शारदा देवी रामकृष्ण जगद्गु पाद पद्मे तयो श्रीवा प्रणमा मुहुर्मुहु ओं सर्वंगलमे शिवे सर्वाधसाधि शरण्ये त्र्यंबके गौरी नारायणी नमोस्तु ते सृष्टिस्थितिनाशा शक्तिभूते सनातनी गुणाश्रिए गुणमयी नारायणी नमोस्तु ते शरणागत दीनापरायणे आरति हरे देवी नारायणी नमोस्तु ते वी हैड वंडरफुल नवरात्रि पूजा द वर्ल्ड नवरात्रि मींस नाइन नाइट्स बिगिनिंग फ्रॉम द प्रथमा द्वितीय द डिवाइन मदर इज वर्शिप्ड इन नाइन डिफरेंट forms with nine different names in nine different ways each night with one one name prathamam shaila putri iti vitiyam brahmacharini like that nine different and in the end on the ninth day siddhidatri maha siddhidatri gauri these are the names of the divine mother how many names does really the divine mother possess infinite names of that we have got thousand names many people chant during this very very sacred occasion it is called lalita sahasranama one of the most beautiful names of the divine mother with deep vedantic significance so we had wonderful time yesterday was vijay dashmi vijaya means victory over the evil the whole essence of this navaratri is that if we take shelter at the feet of the divine mother then she will come and then fight for us and subdue the evil and grant us only good every day in the ramakrishna order we sing three songs most places and four songs in a few places khandana is one omri mritam is second sarva mangala is the third prakrutim paramam is the fourth khandana bhava bandhana om hri mritam these two were composed exclusively as the evening aratrika hymns by no other than swami vivekananda himself and the last one prakrutim paramam was composed by swami abhedananda ji a beloved monastic disciple of shri ramakrishna not only he composed it at the time when holy mother sharda devi was alive but he also came and sang hymned the divine mother beginning with prakrutim paramam etc and then mother was so pleased she blessed swami abhedananda but the third one is most significant om sarva mangala mangalye three verses they summarize the entire vedantic philosophy i will just give a very simple meaning before i go into the details of this why we worship god as mother and god specially as durga or kali and what is the so special about this navaratri durga puja navaratri means mother durga's puja but before i come i have to tell you this is supposed to be gospel of sri ramakrishna class but 
I am deviating because of this Navaratri for two reasons. The first reason is that Sri Ram Krishna had very deep connection with Mother Durga and there were several mystical incidents which I will mention in due course. Second important reason is that Hindus from the from time immemorial was worshipping mother god as mother and especially god as divine mother even though we are not very what we call understanding about the creation preservation and dissolution all these three are done only by the divine mother this has been so beautifully brought out in this hymn sarva mangala mangalye in the second verse srishti sthiti vinashanam shakti bhute sanatane gunashraye gunamahi narayani namostute whenever we think of creation or the world the world which includes me you and everybody whether we are good people evil people we are all children of the divine mother in this world it is only the mother who gives birth to children so if god has created necessarily he has to become a mother to all of us and that is why she is hymned in the second part of the sarva mangala mangalye srishti and it is the same mother who also nourishes who also sustains without whom we can never live and in the end she is also the one who destroys in indian philosophy destruction means always destruction of the evil so evil means avidya avidya means ignorance the divine mother being sarva mangala mangali can never make any being non existent just as clay cannot destroy any pot or any product of the clay because if any product of clay is none other than clay it's impossible for the cause to destroy the effect but then what is this destruction this destruction is to destroy all avidya within us and slowly turn our minds towards god and in the end give us the knowledge my children you have a mother and i am your mother but you were in this samsara since 84 lakh jeevan 84 lakhs that means innumerable not exactly counting hundreds or thousands or lakhs since all these lives you have been as if very very far away from me why because of my own leela i created this i want to play hide and sleep seek i have been hiding myself in the form of the body in the form of the mind in the form of this external world but even if you seem to forget i can never forget i want you children to call me mother and i want to hug you i want to suckle you i want to keep you always with me for my own joy you may seem to enjoy life without me but i can never be enjoying anything without you so i will let you play for some time by hiding myself but ultimately i will destroy your ignorance and turn you to myself and then behold when you look at me cry ma and come running to me tears of joy will be flowing from my eyes my child has come to me this particular hymn i'll just give you a hint 
ఇట్ స్టార్ట్స్ విత్ సర్వ మంగళ మంగళ్య వై టూ వర్డ్స్ వన్ మంగళ విల్ డూ మంగళ మీన్స్ ఆస్పిషియస్నెస్ యూ ఆర్ ది సోర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ ఆస్పిషియస్నెస్ వాట్ ఎవర్ గుడ్ హ్యాపెన్స్ ఇన్ దిస్ వరల్డ్ వాట్ ఎవర్ హ్యాపీనెస్ మ్యాన్ కెన్ డిరైవ్ స్క్వీజ్ ఇన్ దిస్ వరల్డ్ త్రూ ది ఆబ్జెక్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ ది వరల్డ్ ఈజ్ నేమ్డ్ ఇన్ వేదాంత యాజ్ అ ప్రేయస్ సో ఈవెన్ టు గెట్ ప్రేయస్ మ్యాన్ రిక్వైర్స్ డివైన్ మదర్స్ గ్రేస్ బట్ సర్వమంగళ మాంగళ్యే ది వెరీ సోర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఎవ్వెరీ శ్రే ప్రేయస్ ఇన్ దిస్ వరల్డ్ ది అల్టిమేట్ ప్రేయస్ ఇన్ దిస్ వరల్డ్ ఈజ్ కాల్డ్ శ్రేయస్ దట్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ ముక్తి దట్స్ కాల్డ్ లిబరేషన్ అండ్ ఐ ఆమ్ ది సోర్స్ బ్రహ్మానంద ఈజ్ కాల్డ్ శ్రేయస్ బ్రహ్మానంద మేనిఫెస్ట్స్ యాజ్ విషయానంద ది సెన్స్ ప్లెజర్స్ మేధానంద ఇంటలెక్చువల్ ప్లెజర్స్ కళానంద ఎస్థెటిక్ ప్లెజర్ ధర్మానంద మోరల్ ప్లెజర్ అండ్ బ్రహ్మానంద అల్టిమేట్లీ దే ఆర్ నాట్ ఫైవ్ డిఫరెంట్ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ హ్యాపీనెస్ దే ఆర్ ఫైవ్ డిగ్రీస్ ఆఫ్ హ్యాపీనెస్ ఆఫ్ విచ్ ది లోయెస్ట్ ఈస్ విషయానంద సో ఇవల్యూషన్ స్టార్ట్స్ విత్ విషయానంద ప్రోగ్రెసెస్ ఆర్ ఇవాల్వ్స్ ఇన్ టు మేధానంద ఫర్దర్ ప్రోగ్రెసెస్ ఇన్ టు కళానంద దెన్ ప్రోగ్రెసెస్ స్టిల్ ఫర్దర్ ఇన్ టు ధర్మానంద మోరల్ హ్యాపీనెస్ ధార్మిక్ హ్యాపీనెస్ ధర్మానంద అండ్ దెన్ ఫైనల్లీ మర్జెస్ ఇన్ బ్రహ్మానంద దిస్ ఈస్ ది ప్రాసెస్ ఆఫ్ సృష్టి మీన్స్ స్టార్ట్స్ దెన్ స్థితి మీన్స్ గ్రాడ్యుయల్ ఇవల్యూషన్ ప్రోగ్రెస్ అండ్ ఫైనల్లీ ఎండ్స్ విత్ బ్రహ్మానంద దట్ ఈజ్ కాల్డ్ లయ దట్ ఈజ్ అర్లియర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ ప్రళయ అండ్ లేటర్ ఆన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ ఆత్యంతిక ప్రళయ వెన్ ఎ మ్యాన్ ఈజ్ బిస్టౌడ్ బై ది డివైన్ మదర్ విత్ విద్య ఆర్ ట్రూ నాలెడ్జ్ ధి ధియో యోన ప్రచోదయాత్ హీ రియలైజెస్ ది కాజ్ అండ్ ది ఎఫెక్ట్ ఆర్ వన్ అండ్ ది సేమ్ there is no effect but it is manifesting the cause is manifesting with name and form so seems to be separate from the cause there is absolutely no difference like the pot may think i have gone to pot and i think i am a pot and that is called going to pot and really the pot has never been anything but clay the whole universe is nothing but brahma there is nothing separate from the brahman so that is why these three verses she is the giver of both prayers and then shreyas not the other way around first she evolves through prayers and ends in shreyas and that is called srishti is prayers Stiti is gradual progress in Ananda and Laya is completely becoming one with the knowledge I, Mother, Brahman are one and the same. So, this is how we have to understand God as the Mother. And before I go a little further, I will tell you something. In Puranic literature, this same Divine Mother who is himmed as Srishti Sthiti Vinashini, is himmed as what is called creator, sustainer and destroyer. Brahma, Vishnu and Maheshwara. Now observe carefully. Brahma's counterpart is his Shakti, Saraswati. Without Saraswati. Saraswati means Gnana, the goddess of wisdom. if i have knowledge of music knowledge of scriptures that is mother manifesting in me if you have knowledge of science that's mother manifesting if someone has got musical knowledge that is mother manifesting 
it is not she is separate she has knowledge and she gives knowledge she is knowledge and she is manifesting in this form like as i explained annapurna is not a woman sitting somewhere and giving food annapurna she is the embodiment of anna whether it is corona mosquito tiger human being elephant whale every creature is sustained by the food and that is annapurna sustaining so mother saraswati is the goddess of embodiment of wisdom and that wisdom when it is manifesting with chaitanya brahma represents here chaitanya and saraswati represents shakti wherever there is activity there must be two things the intentioner the doer and as well as the knowledge what do i want to do why do i want to do and how do i need to do that is called saraswati so the the source of brahma's creation is saraswati then come to vishnu his role is to maintain the law brahma creates and creation doesn't require anything excepting knowledge that's why he doesn't have any weapon but vishnu requires to protect to sustain to punish to train or to correct people and bring them to the right path so he requires weapons so he has got chakra and then gada etc etc but to maintain one requires tremendous amount of money that's why lakshmi is that maintainer money means the necessary power to keep people some people happy because they have they are traveling in the right path some people are traveling in the wrong path for them they needed to be corrected this is bk skinners carrot and stick methodology to train us to condition us so that we behave properly but without lakshmi vishnu is completely useless that's why brahma and saraswati vishnu and lakshmi and shiva and parvati or durga or kali are inseparable just i will give a small hint you will see mother kali's image where is she standing on shiva why is she standing because mahakali is the shakti shakti manifests in time that's why she is called kali kali means embodiment of kala and shiva what is a timelessness time always is a chunk of timelessness and time cannot stand without timelessness this is symbolically represented as mother kali standing on mahadeva anyway this is just a hint then coming back that we are all children of the mother and she has two powers vidya and avidya now now our mistake avidya means deluding that's a vedantic language the devotee never accepts it should never accept avidya is preparation vidya is actual practice without prepare preparation no fitness is obtained so we must physically intellectually morally aesthetically we must prepare before we turn prayas into shreyas and that process is called avidya karma kanda in the vedas the purpose of karma kanda is not to destroy us but to prepare us so that we will obtain we can enter into take up the course of phd phd means permanent head damage madness phd permanent head damage what does that mean when a person worldly person thinks he is very wise but by divine mother's grace 
he is possessed of shraddha and he becomes mad whom who is calling him mad the, the worldly people the avidya people but madness means he is possessed of one idea that i want nothing but my mother that is called phd so to en- but to enter into phd we have to understand the nature of the world that it is not very pleasant appears to be pleasant but upon coming into close contact it gives nothing but tapatraya when a man after 84 lakhs of births understands this fact that means is evolving comes to the right understanding turns his face towards shreyas towards the divine mother and that is her grace that is called sarva mangala mangalye then no one is able to obtain mother nobody can really even turn one's face towards mother unless mother graciously grants that knowledge so that is why every day we pray to gayatri dhiyo yonaha prachodayat but out of her grace she bestows that understanding that's why in the third verse sharanagata dinartha paritrana parayane sarvasya aarti hare devi narayane namostute so i can only talk very briefly because this shakti tatva the truth the philosophy of shakti is so deep you will be able to understand very nicely because i am going to put you in very briefly why indians especially hindus worship god as mother so today's topic would be why is god worshiped as mother first of all she is the source of creation srishti sustenance sthiti and destruction vinashanam shakti bhute without her shakti without her knowledge without her grace these three are not going to happen what do i mean do i mean that it is only because of her power srishti takes place it's because of her grace sthiti takes place it is because of her knowledge that we are her children this laya takes place and without her grace our buddhi cannot understand this when she awakes us and that is the essence of the story we are going to get very soon so then this the diva, without the divine mother's grace sri ram krishna tells swami brahmanand ji tells impossible for anybody either to get prayas or shreyas either to have bhukti or mukti let me first narrate that story once say holy mother sharada devi was at varanasi and same time swami brahmananda was also at varanasi and one day for, we do not know why holy mother sent some devotee to swami brahmananda whom she used to look upon as her own son and used to call him as rakhal rakhal means a friend of krishna in vrindavan cowherd boy so she sent word at rakhal why is it the mahamaya divine mother is to be worshiped immediately rakhal mara stood up and with folded hands said unless mahamaya destroys our ignorance and opens the door to mukti nobody can obtain mukti having uttered these words he went into an what we call ecstatic state started dancing and that dance will not stop until holy mother came and said rakhal here is prasad please take my child and immediately that mind came down and joyfully accepted prasada bowed down before holy mother so this is the philosophy that's why sri ram krishna worshiped mother kali so that to worship god as mother is is much more easier 
than to worship God as Father. So, anthropologists, sociologists have studied society and they have come to this wonderful conclusion. These anthropologists, they divide humanity into two categories. Those who are what we call patriotic societies, matriarchic societies. Patriarchic societies means societies which worship God as father and the Judaic religions, Abrahamic religions, Semitic religions, Judaism, Christianity and Islam. They worship only God as father and there are variations how they worship. Whereas our Hindus etc. they worship God on, and they, we, are, we belong to the matriarch society. That is Saraswati, Lakshmi and Mother Parvati. Though we have father, our mother is closer to us. I will share a small story which I might have told you several times. One day at 5 minutes to 7, a boy was furiously seen running and he bumped because he did not notice into a gentleman. And the man got annoyed and said, Boy, don't you look where you are going? The boy apologized and then he said, Sorry, sir, I am in a hurry. And the man asked, Why are you in a hurry? Because I have to reach my home before seven. And why do you need to reach your home before seven? Because my mother is waiting to beat me up. Oh, you are, you are so eager to be beaten by your mother. The boy said while running, it's not like that, sir. If I reach after seven, my father is going to beat me up. It's far better to be beaten up by the mother than by the father. That is our concept from the very beginning. She is only all compassion, etc. And this special characteristics of God as a feminine, feminine or masculine, has no gender difference. It is qualitative difference, characteristic differences. So our scriptures tell at least there are seven characteristics of the divine feminine. That is we are talking about mother. What are these things? Very briefly, because these are wonderfully explored in our Puranas. As you know, how many Puranas are there? 36 Puranas are there. 18 main primary Puranas, Mukhya Puranas and 18 Upa Puranas. And all the Puranas can be classified into three categories. Those who extol Vishnu as the greatest God. They are called Vishnu Puranas. Those who extol Shiva as the greatest, Shiva Puranas. Those who extol Devi as the greatest deity, that is called Devi Puranas. So, Devi Bhagavatam, Markandeya Purana, these such Puranas, they are called Devi Puranas. Bhagavatam, Vishnu Purana, etc., they are called Vishnu Puranas and Shiva Purana, Skanda Purana, etc. They are called Shiva Puranas. So these Puranas extensively explain to us why the God has to be considered as a mother. It is not about man or woman or it is what is called sex or gender. It is all about certain characteristics. And the Divine Mother has seven characteristics which any reasonable person can understand. Otherwise, he doesn't have brain. That means mother is not gracious to him. What are these things? First, a source. When we look at this world, we do not see a single object, a single living creature that has not come out of the mother. No man ever gives birth. It is only the woman. And she nourishes, she conceives, she nourishes and then she protects 
and she suckles and she is the first guru and whole life she loves her children like anything so this is called the very source you, there is a word in sanskrit called yoni yoni means the source from which everything comes the very cause the reason why an object the effect comes out so she is the womb the origin of all beings as the upanishad tells us yato va imani bhutani jayante ena bhutani jayante yat prayanti abhisamvishanti iti taitriya says from whom all the beings originate and they are sustained by the very source and they go back to the very source tad brahmeti that is brahman and tapasa brahma vijignasasva through self surrender you come to know about that brahman that is the first reason why the god is to be worshiped as the divine mother second reason her closeness a baby is closest only to the mother whether it is male or female so the physical aspect is very obvious without the baby that's why have you noticed when the baby is just the mother gives birth and immediately the nurse hands over that baby and she start takes her to her bosom and starts suckling and from that time onwards they smell each other it's a big story scientific story how the mother has a special uh, capacity to smell the baby the baby has even more special capacity to smell the mother that's why when a child is restless and mother is not nearby you bring some old cloth smelling of the mother's body and wrap the baby around with that immediately he feels comfortable and goes to happy peaceful sleep so physical as closeness is obvious but the organic dependence for long months in the mother's womb and the symbiotic psychical exchange which goes on in the weeks before and after the birth with the mother needing the child's demand as much as the child needs her supply for nourishment protection comfort stimulation or even mere presence and physical contact it's a well known fact i have seen is a particular scene when i was at cherapunji i was at cherapunji not to uh, eastern part of the country we have a big ashram there for 5 years we had a dairy and then I, out of love and out of curiosity i used to visit the dairy now and then because that is called living close with nature so what happened the cows constantly giving birth and then sometimes the cows die the cows die but it is all hilly area early morning after bringing out the milk the cows are driven out nobody goes with them they know where to go they graze whole day and come back so one evening we all went and saw a cow has given birth to a calf and of course immediately we make it circle and then that night passed next day at about 9 9:30 i went just to see the new calf wonderful thing happened at that time the cows were all after milking the cows they were let out and they all went and about 9 9:30 this small one day old calf started crying amba it must have been hungry probably it was fed milk but not to indians in our feed sufficiently it just they use this cows as starting machines that's all after that they pull them away so it was must the voice that was coming out was very very feeble but i don't know what happened i was uh, struck with wonder that that mother had heard which was one or two miles away it heard the baby's cry 
it uplifted tail it started running towards the calf and it dashed into the cow shed and then circled the calf until it was satisfied i read about it in the homa god is like that cow we are like the children and the mother is always waiting for the slightest whimper of a baby and immediately it will come to her and i would not have understood this statement until i witnessed that wonderful thing so she is the what we call closeness for everything third characteristic all encompassing love nobody can compare a mother's love she is ready to give her very life in and what is the speciality even in ordinary mother her love is incomparable towards her children but in god's love there is no trace of partiality how can that be love we ask that his reign god's reign falls upon the just and the unjust upon the clean places unclean places in uh, countries which are inimical countries which are friendly it god's love knows no partiality it is alike that is a proof of his impartial love all encompassing love if that is the case what to speak about the divine mother so why did she kill these asuras out of her great love chandi that book itself raises this question oh mother by your very will you could have destroyed all these asuras why you yourself have participated in this massacre and then chandi itself gives the answer oh mother with your own hands if you destroy what do you destroy the avidya agnana and then you clean them up and then you take them into your bosom so that these children of dain also can get mukti or moksha that's why you yourself have participated and that is the story we get there then forbearance who, who can compare the mother's forbearance with anything divine mother must be inexhaustible forbearance how many evils wrongs mischief we do and yet with infinite patience she bears up everything and human mind cannot understand this forbearance then forgiveness a child may do any bad thing any wrong thing and thousands and thousands of children we all do it but as shankaracharya hymns in one of his greatest stotras to the divine mother kuputro jayeta there may be many evil bad sons kochidapi never is it seen kumata bhavati there is never a bad mother that is it is impossible so she can forgive anything she is forgiving what is the lesson you we might have done many things in the past we need not regret simply say oh mother we have done lot of wrong things please forgive once only you tell forgive like rama says if anybody once says oh lord i have done many things wrong i take refuge in you once if he says i belong to you thereafter i will never leave that person that's why one of his names is achyuta chuta means to give up achyuta means never to give up once we say to god we belong to him we may give him up we may try to give him up but he will never let our hands go because he understands this is my child he is ignorant and he told he called me papa mama and i will never give him up that is forgiveness and sarva mangala mangalye auspiciousness whatever mother does even if it appears to be severe punishment even if it appears to be virulent to covid it is only out of her auspiciousness everything is for the good of her children the whole world is mother's child for the good of the mother and we must strongly believe and understand 
that nothing happens, it's all mother's will, no one else is responsible. Then, what is this last one? It is not last but not least, only for our sake, playfulness, Leela. A whole, this Srishti Stiti Laya is a divine Leela. That is why in the Lalita Sahasranama it is said, Mithya Jagat Adhisthana Muktida Mukti Rupini Mithya Jagat Adhisthatri. She is the director of this entire world drama. The whole is what is called Brahmanda Leela, the whole universe. This is a big drama. That's why God is called Ranganatha, Sri Ranganatha. He is the director of this entire world. That's why Sri Krishna is called Leela Manusha Vigraha. The entire thing, Srishti Stithilaya, everything is a Leela. So, she is playing hide and seek for whose pleasure? For our pleasure and for her pleasure. If we know she is playing, then we won't, the drama will not be 100%, uh, it will not give happiness. We must really feel, when we are watching a cinema, oh, it is absolute reality. At, at the back of our deep unconscious, we know it is only a cinema. How do we know? Because if we enjoy any cinema, we, after we come out, we recommend it to our friends. And if necessary, pay for it and go and see again and again. Why? Because even though it is painful, we know that is an artistic pain, it is a Leela pain. These are the sum of the things. Now we are coming into the real talk. Sri Ramakrishna worshipped Sharada Devi as a Divine Mother. It is called Shodashi Puja. So now I am going to tell you why in this sannyasi organizations they, we have to uh, worship this, sing the hymns of the Divine Mother. Probably many of you do not know, sannyasins are of two types. Those who belong to the Advaita Sampradaya tradition and those who belong to Dvaita Sampradaya, Dvaitic tradition like Ramanujas and Madhvacharyas so many, what is called Rama, Sadhus, etc., etc. Now, we all, Ramakrishna orders Swamis, Ramakrishna himself was a disciple of Totapuri Maharaj, and he uh, got initiated into Mahamantra. Now, in this Advaitic Sampradaya, which was created by Shankaracharya, and he created specially ten names, that's why it is called Dasha Nami Sampradaya. Nami means names. Dasha means ten. Giri, Puri, Bharati, Saraswati, Aranya, these are some of the names, Tirtha, etc. And Shankaracharya has created four special ashramas, four corners of the India. Shingeri, Puri, Jyotir Mata near Badrik Ashrama and near Dwaraka. And he made one, one of his disciples in charge and commanded them, you propagate Advaita to these to four corners of India. And then, the sanya, Advaita sannyasins are initiated not to, into Ishtadevata mantra, but into Mahavakya. That is to say, I and God is one. That is the essence. Aham, Brahmasmi, Tattvamasi, Ayamatma Brahma, Prajnanam Brahma. Now, what is important is, there is any, any ashrama belonging to this Dashanami Sampradaya can only worship two forms of God. One is Shiva because he is Sanyasi Raja, he is the emperor of Sanyasins, Yogi Ishvara, and Sharadamba, Saraswati, because she is the mother of wisdom, embodiment of wisdom, giver of wisdom, giver of that Jiva, Ishvara, Aikya, Gnanam. Only she can give. So, we cannot worship anybody else. But in the Ramakrishna order, we worship Durga, we worship Kali, we worship Ganesha, we worship every possible God and Goddess 
including Jesus Christ, including the Prophet Muhammad also. Why? Because it is, it is Sri Ram Krishna had expanded that unique Advaitic vision. He himself worshipped God only as the Divine Mother. Throughout his sadhana, he worshipped God mainly as the Divine Mother Kali. That symbolism is marvelous, but to, I will not go during this series. Now, there is Sri Ramakrishna practice Tantric Sadhana. And in that Tantric Sadhana, as a culmination of it, once he worshipped his own wife, looking upon her as the Divine Mother, Tripura Sundari. And that is called, when a girl is 16 years old, a lady is 16 years old, she is called Shodashi Bala. At that time, one has to worship uh, the Divine Mother as Shodashi. And in the uh, Kali Puja occurs twice in a year. One is, which is going to come after near about a month on the Amavasya day. And another is in the month of May, which is called Falaharini Kali Puja. Falaharini means not one who enjoys fruits. Phala means fruits. Phalaharini means one who destroys karma phala, both good and evil. And when there are no good or evil karma phala, man is instantaneously, he becomes free. It is that means he gets up to his mukti. On that night, Sri Ramakrishna told his nephew that I want to worship the Divine Mother prepare in my own room and Hridaya did not understand. He prepared the whole thing and then after that he called Holy Mother and she became semi-conscious and ascended on the pitha on which where Mother Kali was supposed to be and she sat and she went into Samadhi. Sri Ramakrishna worshipped her and at the end offered all that he obtained at the feet of the Holy Mother and took these three shlokas, Sarva Mangala Mangalye, Srishti Stiti, Sharanagata Dinartha, and say, prayed, O oh Mother, please uh, remain in this lady's body and do good to the whole world from now onwards. And I have offered you at your feet all that I obtained as a result of 12 years spiritual sadhana. And so she, he awakened the Divine Motherhood in Holy Mother and later on Sri Ramakrishna left her as the Divine Mother and the, all the earnings of Sri Ramakrishna's spiritual power is in her hands and if our Holy Mother wishes then she will grant any one of us that Mukti. She is granting according to our receiving capacity. So this is the origin but at that time Ramakrishna mission did not exist. And that is why, this, as soon as Ramakrishna mission was formed by Swamiji, slowly, Khandana Bhavabandhana, Om Rim Ritam, then Saramangala. And after some time, Swami Abhidananda composed, especially that most marvelous hymn, Prakrutim Parama. So, these are the uh, four hymns, usually sung at the time of Vespers in our Ramakrishna order. Then, as I mentioned just now, the Dashanami Sampradaya Sadhus do not worship. But we do not, not only we belong, but we expand our vision and say that Sri Ramakrishna is Sarvadeva Devi Swarupa and Holy Mother is also Sarvadeva Devi Swarupini. Now, Swami Vekananda at the beginning was dead against any type of worship because he saw whole India is full of these temples and am very poorly maintained in morning till evening as God is woken up and is granted first class food and curtain is falling, curtain is opening whole day this Babaism is going on. So he said we will keep to the minimum and he was dead against introduction of any of the other worships. But once it so happened, it was just three, four days before Durga Puja, Swamiji, Swami Vekaranda had a vision 
that mother kali from dakshineshwar is coming to belur mat in the form of durga conveying their way i would like to be worshiped as durga for for what purpose not for her purpose for all children like us so swami ji understood and what happened before swami ji swami brahmanand ji had a vision that mother durga was being worshiped at belur mat he understood but out of fear of swami ji and everybody was scared of swami vekananda because he was a first class orator and while scolding also his oratory was in, in, incomparable so everybody was terribly frightened scared so swami brahmananda even though he was a nirvikalpa samadhi experiencer he was scared to death but after swami ji had that vision probably the divine mother being a wise lady understood my appearing to brahmananda is not going to work out i better myself directly approach narin and then uh, beg him whether he could accommodate my request so swami ji was overwhelmed he came and called raja maharaj raja i had this vision raja maharaj said yes yes i too had it but because of your fear i could not tell it tell you so let us worship but at that time how to worship where is the image where are the preparations because it requires at least to three months earlier preparations for durga puja believe me later on i will tell you some other time so one brahmachari krishna lal was sent to one particular area in calcutta which is called kumar tuli where Uh, all these images are made thousands of them people come by according to their capacity and krishna lal went there perhaps hoping maybe there would be a small image of durga to his astonishment he found a huge image of mother durga and then he asked is it for sale the owner said yes how come that before durga puja has come and this image is not taken and he was it was, he was explained that a rich man had ordered it but some disaster had taken place in his family he could not worship so he sent news you better sell it to somebody else and then that was when this brahmachari went joyfully he purchased it and it would have cost a lot but it was very cheap because the rich man paid for it and brought it to belur mat and then installed now holy mother was at calcutta and then swami ji invited mother came and stayed at belur mat which normally women were not allowed to stay in those days in the mat itself she stayed with her companions every day she used to come and witness the durga puja at the end when the mother durga is to be immersed holy mother came she gave some donation also that money rupee 10 rupee note is even being preserved in belur mat i think uh, she said every year mother durga will come for the welfare of the world so that was the origins of durga puja in a dashanami sampradaya matha so we worship the divine mother all the time now before i close because this one point i want to make points i want to make first of all when our concept of god is always based upon some scriptures please keep this in mind is a very important point supposing somebody has become devotee of vishnu how did he get this understanding about vishnu as god is purely based upon puranas like bhagavatam mainly bhagavatam vishnu purana and that has been expounded by harikatha people by elders by scholars etc and we hear about it we conceive of god as expounded and explained in those scriptures and we have a concept of this vishnu so also shiva so also divine mother durga and what is the source of our understanding in this durga about durga it is based upon one particular section of markandeya purana 
This Markandeya Purana has a section of 700 slokas, approximately, that goes by three names. Chandi is one name, Durga Saptashati is another name, Devi Mahatmya is another name. And in this Saptashati, Chandi, Devi Mahatmya, all the, the origin and the glory and the special characteristics and the special powers of Divine Mother is there. Our concept of Mother Durga is completely based upon that. So, this Durga Saptashati has got 700 shlokas nearly and this book is divided into three parts, three stories. Next class I will expound the inner symbolism or allegory of these stories but I am giving the background history now. These stories are not ordinary stories. Every story in the Puranas, in the Mahabharata Ramayana and in this Durga Shaptashati has an exoteric meaning, esoteric meaning, an outer meaning, an inner meaning. We have to explore the inner meaning, otherwise we will have very crude concept of God as the Divine Mother, of which I already mentioned briefly seven characteristics like the source, closeness, nourish, nourishment, etc. Now, in this, these stories, or three stories, are most marvelous. What is the story? That we are all in this world and we are completely possessed by avidya and avidya manifests in the form of egotism, in the form of complete slavery to our sense organs and complete lust and karma and krodha etc. So these three stories consecutively a story of Brahma's creation where evil people means evil qualities are manifest in the form of Madhu and Kaitava. Second story is the manifestation of pure unadulterated egotism in the form of Mahishasura, stubborn and unremovable like a buffalo. Buffalo is known, you beat it, it won't move from anywhere. Third story is Kama and Krodha, Shumbha and Nishumbha. They represent consecutively first Kama and then Krodha. How do we know? Because the Divine Mother manifests accordingly to remove that evil and help the Atma to get rid of the dross and attain Mukti. So, in the third story, I am just giving a hint, the mother assumes the form of Miss Universe. Of course, you all know a Miss Universe every year elected. What is a Miss Universe? Where for many, many years, a lady is missed, excepting for a few days. That's right, she is called Miss Universe. Anyway, the Divine Mother nicely decorated herself, lipsticks and all those latest fashions, sat on the highest pedestal so that she will attract the notice of everybody and invariably she made it a point to be to be seen and the attendants of Shambhani Shambha, Chanda and Munda, they saw her and they ran, reported and naturally their lust has been increased. Then when she was not available, their anger has been roused and there was a battle and she, in that form, she cleanses her children's dross and then gives them mukti. Mahishasura, egotism. Egotism changes its shape into so many ways. But the first story, Brahma wanted to be create this world. He got the commission from Vishnu. And then after giving the commandment, to Brahma, now you create the world because I created you. The way I created you because I understood I am a wise man, I, otherwise I have to do myself. Now that I have got an assistant, I will put all the responsibility and burden upon you. Now you create. Poor Brahma was about to create. 
Suddenly what happened? After giving the commission, Vishnu promptly went to deep sleep and he was not getting up. And from the ear wax of this Vishnu, two demons came. Demons called Madhu and Kaitava. And they saw Brahma and they wanted to finish him off. Then Brahma was helpless. Creator is helpless. So what to do? He required the help of Vishnu. But what is happening to Vishnu? He is sleeping. Why is he sleeping? Because the Divine Mother mesmerized him. Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Nidra Rupena Samsthita. So Brahma hints the Divine Mother Tvam Swaha, Tvam Sadha, Tvam Vashatkaraha, Swaratmika. Beautiful hymn. The very first Charitra we will get. And the Divine Mother blessed Brahma and then withdrew her power of sleep. Then Vishnu got up and then he saw the Madhu and Kaitava. He understood what was the problem and he fought with them for 5000 years. And he fought so well. His Madhu and Kaitava became very egotistic but they were fair people. He said, oh Vishnu, you are a grand hero. You could fight with us. Oh my God, you are equal to us. We are pleased with you. We will grant you a boon. What is the boon? You ask. Foolish fellows. Then Vishnu promptly clever fellow. He said, no, no, no. You are so gracious. Only grant this boon that may you be killed by me. And Vanchita Abhyam, are, 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 what foolish fellows we are. What type of boon we gave to this fellow. Now we have to die. But they put the condition where there is no water at that, that means there is no cause. Then only you kill us. Immediately he gathered them into his lap where there is above water and finished them off. Then Brahma became free, free to create. Create what? That is the story we will talk about in our next class. Om Jananim Sharadam Devim Ramakrishnam Jagat Gurum Padapadme Tayo Sritva Pranamami Mohor Mohoho May Mother Durga Sri Ramakrishna Holy Mother and Swami Vekananda bless us all with Bhakti, Gnana, Viveka and Vairagya. Jai Ramakrishna.